Do you play video games? I will tell you how that can be good for you. How can video games boost your mental health? This is the University of the Netherlands. When do you play video games? Sometimes we play when we are stressed. For example, when we are commuting on the train and it's loud and crowded. Or we play because we want to interact with others. Something many people have done during social isolation when we have no other way of reaching our friends. And sometimes the world around us is just too much and we look for a world where we are guided, goals are clear, and the stories are rich in fantasy and emotional content. Video games provide us with all that. And while all these aspects are important to understand, games have more facets. Video games, in comparison to books or movies, allow us to actively engage and immerse ourselves through play. With our actions and choices in a game, we can decide what happens and experience different outcomes. Video games are played by millions of people around the world of all ages, races, and genders. In my research, I found that games are also played by people across a range of mental health indicators. People who are depressed or suffer from anxiety still play games, which makes video games a great platform to support better mental health. I'm invested in the question of what video games have to offer to support mental health and what the way we use video games tells us about how well we are. In this lecture, I will explain a bit about the power of play and why I believe that video games are a great and maybe unexpected resource for your mental health. Before we dive into video games, let's look at why video games are so great to study people's behavior and feelings. Games, in contrast to courses or programs, are something people engage with because they want to, not because they feel they have to. This makes games or game elements an interesting tool for education and therapy. But how can video games influence how we feel? Being masterfully designed, video games provide us with enjoyable challenges, allow us to play with our friends and give us choices to be whoever we want to be and explore fantastical worlds. If you played games, think about difficult section of a game you tried to overcome, how you had fun with your friends, or how you made meaningful choices during play. Competence, autonomy, and feeling connected to others have been identified as experience that we need to flourish and personally grow. In psychology, the theory that explains the positive effect of competence, autonomy, and relatedness on our potential to grow is called self-determination theory. It is important for our well-being to have experiences where we feel we are in control and or master a new task. For example, when learning a new music instrument, it is important to experience that we are not just forced into behaving a certain way, but that we can make meaningful choices about our lives and that we feel like we belong, that we are not alone. Applying self-determination theory to video games, research has shown that violence might draw players in but not necessarily because of a violent act like shooting itself, but because first-person shooters like Call of Duty involve challenging tasks like planning, strategizing, aiming, and reacting in the right moment. And when we feel like we are mastering the complexity of a game that involves decisions and rapid, precise actions, we enjoy ourselves and experience growth. One way to express ourselves in games is by creating an in-game character or avatar. When we create our own avatar, we feel like we connect more to a game, and choices in games make us feel like we are in control, even if the rest of our own life might feel different. These experiences in games are intense and sometimes really wholesome, as games such as Animal Crossing show. In Animal Crossing, you play a character stranded on an island, and the majority of the game revolves around unlocking new options to customize your home, structure your island in ways you like it to be, and invite your friends to share how you create your own world. These feelings of autonomy and the accompanied engagement by our own choice lead to feelings of enjoyment and make us feel well and good about ourselves. Connecting to other players or bonding with a game avatar can also create strong experience of belonging. This can, for example, be the connection esports players feel towards their team members. In esports, players spend similar amounts of time as soccer players on training and learning the game and as a result, they feel a strong connection to each other. Or playing in Fortnite allows players to connect with their friends and cooperate in dangerous game world to survive. Of course, games where we cooperate or interact with others can also be frustrating when the team isn't performing well 
or you are not performing well in the team. But when it works out, social interaction in games can give a sense of fulfillment, just like social interactions in our daily lives. Having a source that we can turn to where we experience competence, autonomy and relatedness makes us more resilient to negative events in daily life. Playing in moderation can help us to deal with separation, job loss, self-doubt and social isolation. And sometimes games can help us just by allowing us to distract ourselves until we are ready to face the consequences of negative events. In my research, I've also shown that gameplay can reduce anxiety in the moment and that game design elements like avatars can support engagement in regular training programs like learning relaxing breathing techniques. So video games can influence how we feel, good or bad, and might even help with dealing with anxiety. Apart from these effects in regular games, there are also games that are directed towards understanding mental illnesses and even ones that can help to treat them. One element of game and gameplay that can be used in coping with a supporting mental health treatment is the story or narrative of a game. The story of a video game allows us to engage with different topics and learn about mental health. And from the perspective of treating mental health, understanding when we are ill and need help and learning how exactly our mental health influences us is of importance. The game Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, for example, allows us to engage with a protagonist who suffers from schizophrenia, an illness where people interpret the world differently than most of us. They hear voices or see things that are not there. Schizophrenia is often confused with multiple personality disorder to describe people who show differences in their personality. Hellblade sets an example where we can learn about different mental health conditions and their effects on what we hear, see, or feel. By creating a game that allows players to experience how a mental illness is experienced, the threshold to learn about mental illnesses becomes lower. And because people engage with a game because they want to and not because they feel they have to, it becomes easier to engage with topics that would otherwise be neglected. Many mental illnesses affect our mood, thinking, and behavior. Anxiety can lead us to believe future problems are bigger than they actually are. Depression leads us to lose hope about the future and eating disorders are expressed as misconceptions about our body. Video games have the power to tell narratives and different mental illnesses, they allow us to represent visual experiences, like the world looking hopeless, or they can alter what we hear and they can sometimes teach us techniques to overcome challenging moments in our life. Video games are under no circumstances a replacement for professional help, but they can be a resource that helps us to overcome adverse moments in life. The game That Dragon Cancer addresses the desperation of child loss and allows the game creators Ryan and Amy Green to share their most personal experience. Or the game Papa and Yo throws the player into a world where our best friend can turn into a monster, providing insights into the dynamic of alcohol abuse and its effect on children. As such, games addressing challenging topics allow us to express and examine these topics, engage in conversations, and share perspective, ultimately leading to an increase in openness and support among each other. Gamers can also make a change for our well-being by showing how diverse the world is. Today, many game studios make efforts to represent diversity in games and show more protagonists than only white male players, but make space for players with diverse backgrounds, preferences, and abilities. I hope in the future we see more games representing society and not just a limited and outdated customer base. Why is representation in games so important for mental well-being? Social isolation is incredibly harmful for individuals. Therefore, representation and inclusion in games really matter for the well-being of society. We all need heroes we can look up to and characters we can identify with. Today, even more than ever, being able to enjoy games and play with others is central to connecting and feeling connected to others. So far, we have seen that games can help people grow and how they can be used to improve mental well-being. Video games are sometimes depicted as being focused on violence and that they make us lazy and that they are played excessively. As much enjoyment, fun, and connection games should bring to society, as with most things that we enjoy, like sports or art, or going out with friends. If video games are good for us, depends. Psychology distinguishes between harmonious and obsessive passion, a concept applicable to many areas in life, like sport, work, and video games. Harmonious passion is when we play because we really like to. Obsessive passion is when we engage because we feel like we have to. 
Research shows that if an activity like gaming is harmful to us depends on what drives us to play. Do we really enjoy playing? Or are we just playing because we feel lonely and games are a reliable escape? Or are we playing because we are striving, because we love the world we explore? We appreciate the artwork and our investment in play aligns with our lifestyle. Or do we engage because we feel like we have a duty, like we miss out when we don't play, or we constantly don't know what else to do with our time? With video gameplay, it is like eating, working, or exercising. We have to be mindful of ourselves and listen to how much feels good for us. Investigating what video games have to offer for our own mental health and for understanding societal mental health, we find a rich environment that enables researchers to investigate low mental health, to create interventions that help people with mental health, or to educate those who don't understand what it means to suffer from mental illness. Games can help us build more inclusive societies, engage in new challenges, find our own path, and connect with friends. So when answering the question, how can video games boost your mental health, I'd say they can help us deal with a complex world, help us reflect and grow, and are an undervalued resource for our mental health. Thank you for watching.